All right, here's some good and bad news. The good news is solar is in the news more. The bad news is sometimes it's bad news. And an article just came out by Time. Uh, author Alana Samuels, I hope I'm saying that name right. The author points out some incongruencies for the solar industry. And so want to do a reaction video on some of the things they detailed, the good, the bad, and just the whatever. So start out, I understand the value of a clickbaity headline. I also have issues with clickbaity headlines. And this is maybe a clickbaity one, maybe one, I, I don't agree with this. It's how solar sales rolls threaten the green energy transition. There's a lot of assumptions in that headline. The first assumption is that there's this like independent green energy transition that is happening separate from solar sales companies. I wish we lived in such a world where I own a solar company and people are just flocking to us to learn more about solar. Even if they're getting competitive bids, I would welcome that. The reality is the American public <laughs> doesn't know anything or care about solar at all. I have run literal ads that just say, hey, here's what we're doing. This is a really good product and offering. They just get ignored. It's crazy. The way most people find out about solar is by someone knocking on their door and talking to them about it. There's a practical part of that too. If we run ads, like probably 20, 30, if not more percent of the ads, people don't even qualify for solar because their house is shaded. So there's a practical nature of like knocking on the door for solar because you can see that it's a good house for solar. But there's not this like green energy revolution that people are seeking out solar companies. Solar is sold, not bought. I'm excited for the day when it's bought, but until then to get people to buy any new product or service, there's always this education period. And we are definitely only at like a two to 4% market penetration. Some markets are higher, but to get someone to switch to green energy, you have to educate them and walk them through. Now, the author does detail ways that education is done very poorly or even ethically. And I agree with a lot of points they have, but we have to recognize that the only way people are gonna go solar right now is through a lot of handholding. That's myth number one I wanted to cover. Myth number two comes in the story they show. And like any good author, they tell a story, right? And the story about Ryan, how he went out and sold solar, he made a lot of money, but something didn't sit right with him, so he quit. That highlights kind of the atypical thing that happens in solar. The second myth is that there's all this money in solar sales. And I think you could take any sale, direct sales industry, or well, any industry in general, and point out the top 1% as like the majority. And that's, that's not the case. I could go to real estate. There's real estate agents making millions of dollars. There's also real estate agents making next to no money at all. I don't know the stat, but I'm, I'm guessing most real estate agents make somewhere between fifty, eighty thousand dollars $80,000. We'll reference it and post it here. But running payroll for the last four years for solar sales reps, the average is like fifty to $70,000. Do you have some top performers that are doing really well? Yes. Do you have some low performers that are really struggling? Yes. But the averages are fifty to $80,000. That's not a huge alarm bell to me. Now, the alarm bells, which they do raise, is that there are unethical sales reps out there doing practices that should not be done or there's a lot of gray area. And that's a part of the article that I 100% agree with. So there's a few things they mentioned. They say no barrier entry to set for salespeople, a salesman who stress the truth, and um, there's no regulation. Those are the three things, the three highlights they go after that I do agree with that I struggle combating because we do our very best to be transparent with the customers, like make sure our reps are using correct language, not over-promising, like under-promising, over-delivering. But at the, at the same time, like we go up against bids every week where it's like, where do they get those numbers? Like a salesperson will tell the customer something, or maybe the customer misunderstands. Again, there's, there's an education portion to it, but they'll like make these wild promises and the customer doesn't know who to trust. They want to go with the best product solution and there's no barometer, there's no standard. And so they'll choose another company. This happened this last year as customer called us and said, hey, can you help service my system. I went with the other company. I'm sorry, I should have went with you guys. And we're like, we told you not to go with that company for X, Y, Z reasons. You went with them anyway, because you like, you thought you trusted the over promise, not the under promise. That's an issue. And there's no regulation. There's no standard body to say what can or can't be said in a home or, or to hold them accountable. And that's definitely something that may or may not come in the industry. And we do need to better do a better job of. And so my recommendation for that is for consumers, you need to make sure you put your skeptical hat on like solar Solar works. Solar 100% is a good thing. Who you choose, that determines your experience. And so choosing a company that's like consistent, that answers their phone calls, that's not over-promising, that is under-promising and passes that sniff test is, is very important for you to do. Maybe it's maybe it's not common sense and that's why they have these, these issues. But anyway, that's like, that would be my one recommendation is just make sure you're doing your homework. 
to figure out which companies you should and shouldn't work for. Because at the end of the day, new industries are always gonna have problems. We don't blame the car industry for not putting seatbelts in cars for decades. Like that seems like a pretty common sense thing. Like I'm going 10, 20, 30, 50, 60, 100 miles an hour down the road and I don't have a safety restraint when other cars are coming at me doing that. Like, it seems like common sense, but it wasn't for a long time. But we don't blame car companies for not doing that, right? There's not this negative connotation for car companies right now. I think when we look back at solar, we'll be like, oh, yeah, it was kind of wild west, but that's kind of is what it is with new products and services. It's up to the consumer to do their best. It's up to companies to make sure we're doing our very best to train and educate. And that's why we do these videos so that we can be transparent about our industry, transparent about our process, transparent about us to help people make good decisions, you know, regardless if that like has any financial benefit to us or not. Overall, I think we're really grateful for articles like this because they give awareness to people. The good guys in the industry can take advantage of that, to highlight the good, but also highlight the bad. Solar is an amazing industry to work in. It's like literally providing sustainable lifestyles, both like for the company and for the consumers. And uh, that energy transition is happening. We just have to be wise in how we transition over to it. Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe. Appreciate your time. And if you are interested in working in solar or in getting solar, feel free to hit us up in the comments or at our website, which is in the link below.